Right, Ajax have appointed a new interim head coach and he's got quite the task on his hands with the Dutch giant's bottom of the Eredivisie. Dutch football journalist Marcel van der Kran joins us now live. Good afternoon to you, Marcel. They've appointed John van Schip as the interim head coach until June 2025, I think, and then he'll move into a, the technical management role next summer. What can you tell us about him and his career so far? Well, Johnny van Schip has a long career at Ajax, has a long career in the Dutch national team, and he was grown up in the, in the atmosphere and the education of Ajax football. And it's an obvious chance and choice for uh, Ajax to get him because they need to restore a lot from what has gone wrong over the past few months. And he looks the ideal candidate because he carries all the DNA of the club. Marcel, he comes with quite a story, doesn't he? Because he was recently coach of Greece, but he stood down to be with his wife after she was diagnosed with bowel cancer. And sadly, she died recently. How ready is he to return to football, do you feel? Well, I spoke to him um, two weeks ago and uh, his wife had told him, John, please go back into coaching. Um, my life is coming to an end. And it was a very, very brave decision of his wife. She's a, she's a famous person also in Holland, comes from a big television uh, and theatre family and um, she wanted him to go back into football and she says you need something when I'm not here anymore and it was incredibly sad uh, but it, it's given him the motivation look if my wife's behind this uh, the funeral was only last week and he's fully motivated he took his kids away for a few days to, to Greece he's now back he started today he's in front of the squad because they have a day off today and tomorrow he will have the reins of Ajax and indeed a massive, massive task on his shoulders. Yeah, it is huge. Why has it gone so wrong in re recent months for them? It's actually beyond belief what's happened at Ajax. Um, and it's also almost a, the total shame of Dutch football because Ajax, because of the brand, because of the name, the history, the, the, the fantastic results they've had in the past, winning Champions Leagues, the European Cups, from the 70s till the 90s, and still producing so much talent. Um, yesterday, in the game against PSV Eindhoven, where we see Ajax score here, and where um, they, they had a bit of a revival, and we thought, oh, well, maybe this is you know the first step on the ladder back up. But in the second half, they were absolutely demolished again, you know, conceding five goals in total. And th there is a long way to go, and mainly because Ajax have had the worst and the most disastrous transfer policy summer ever in the history of the club. As far as I can remember, I've followed the club for 38 years, and this is what is happening now, bringing the players in, not, you know, uh, not resting on, on the, 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 the education of the player, the academy. It's, it's something that is totally different from what they've always done. The DNA has gone. They've sacked the technical director, Sven Mislintat, a German, which was already an, a, a bit of an odd appointment by the people of Ajax. And they've tried two, three different coaches over the last um, six months. And it, it really needs to start from scratch. And now they are bottom of the league, which has never happened before. Worst start ever. Everything is worse you know, at the moment. And um, it, it's quite staggering what is happening to the club. Is there a glimmer of hope? Obviously, the chief executive, Edwin van der Sar, recovering well, I hear. His wife posted some pictures of them on holiday. Could he be about to return to the club? And that would give them some help, wouldn't it? Edwin van der Sar did a brilliant job together with their former player, Mark Overmars. Together, they made maybe 400 million, 500 million worth of profits in player sales that every time they built up a new squad, but Overmars had to go because of some um, private uh, circumstances, you know, and Edwin van der Sar's recovery is going well, but he will not return to the club ever, I think. And um, he's had his time at the club and it was too stressful over the last period, maybe 12, 18 months for him to run the club on his own when he left, uh, when he was uh, left without Mark Overmars. So it's really looking at, Maybe Louis van Gaal is the advisor at the moment. He's a consultant on a kind of an interim basis. And they brought back in a, a former chairman, Michael van Praag, who was always there in the glory years. But they all seem to be very desperate attempts. And what is surprising most people is that how can it go wrong with such a big club, such a big brand, 
in such a short time. And everybody looks at Man United and many other big clubs. Juventus have, have had crashes and crises, but it really can happen to every club. Yeah, and it feels like it's crumbled from the top downwards then, doesn't it? I mean, you said you, you're categoric there that Edwin van der Sar won't return in any capacity. So how much of a fear is it, the real fear of relegation, do you feel for Ajax at the moment? Well, there was an opinion poll yesterday and people were asked, you know, would you think they can relegate? And bizarrely, I think about 24% of the people actually fear, mostly Ajax fans, that they will relegate. But I can't see this happen. They've still got the quality there. You could see uh, 45 minutes of great football yesterday in, in one of the biggest games of the season. And when you've got that, they have enough quality to go back up the ladder. They have a few games in hand. And I still think they could even push it if they have a good second half of the season for a European uh, place in, uh, in football. It's such a fall from grace because it was only a couple of seasons ago when Eric Ten Hag was there, but they, they were champions. He's now obviously moved on to Manchester United where it's really not going so well for him at the moment. Obviously, they were beaten well in the Manchester derby, you may know. Um, you know him very well. Will he believe he can turn this around? At Manchester United, he still has massive belief. Um, Eric Ten Hag has had difficult times before, but bizarrely, at every club, every squad he's had, he's always been able to build it. Uh, in, in, in a brilliant team, teams with uh, quality players, teams where the players were improving. And the only difference is that in the past, he was always working with young players. I think here, Manchester United have been buying uh, players who are older. It's not so easy to change them anymore. And maybe that's where he underestimated the task on and the size of Manchester United it's, it's like a, a mammoth tanker in, on, on the North Sea. It's difficult to, to steer it a different way. And I think this is what probably his biggest problem is at the moment. You can't change the squad so easy because they, they've invested maybe 400 million over the last two seasons. You cannot buy all new players. You cannot kick out the old ones. Uh, it's been difficult enough to, to, to get on with players like Harry Maguire. He's still in that squad. And I think that's where his biggest problem is. But Ten Hag is a real football man. He, he's there at 7.30 in the morning till 7.30 at night. He's absolutely convinced he can bring success there. Marcel, are you seeing a different side of Eric Ten Hag at the moment in terms of, of what he does with players? Because he's, he's proven to be quite the disciplinarian, certainly with what's playing out with Jadon Sancho and, and how he's treated some of his players. You know, he's been very tough on them, some might say. Is that a different side that you're seeing to Eric Ten Hag or has he always had this in his locker? No, he's, he's always had that. And I can't see anything different at the moment because that tough stance on, on his players and whether it's Jadon Sancho or whether it's Harry Maguire or uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, that has all happened before in his squad. Whenever players were not playing to his ideas, his rules, his, his, his discipline, he would take strong measurements. And I think that is the only way he is convinced that can help the club it can help the dressing room. And it usually, and I, I'm still hearing the same signals from Manchester United and, and from his entourage, that the players are still respecting him for that. He would have been in a much more difficult position if he'd stuck with Cristiano Ronaldo, if he had uh, stuck with Jadon Sancho in his squad and accept all the behaviour of Jadon Sancho. That wouldn't be the real Tanah anymore. I think once that would happen, that he would listen to his players, no. That would not be the future. They have to listen to him. And if it goes wrong, it is on his own um, ideas and football philosophy. Yeah, it's interesting to see what he's got to deal with at the moment. Just finally, before you go, there is this other story from the Netherlands, isn't there? Alarming scenes yesterday's match between Nijmegen and AZ Alkmaar, where the former Dutch international das boss collapsed on the pitch. Have you got any updates on what's happening there and how he's doing? Well, the great news is that he's fine at the moment. They're still investigating what was the cause of his collapse. It was really shocking to see, you know, he, in, in hospital, he put his thumbs up yesterday. Actually, when he was taken into the ambulance, um, he went by the, the dressing room and he asked the ambulance man to stop. He says, I want to have a word with the players. And they said, no, 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 we need to rush you to the hospital. He said, look, I insist. And the door was wide open. All the players were listening to him. And he says, guys, 
I'm fine. And he stuck that same thumb up as you just saw. And that was a really um, yeah, encouraging message from the player because the scenes earlier on, on the pitch were so dramatic and the players had to go around him while he was getting treatment uh, and, you know, they tried to look at look what was wrong with his heart. And um, I don't know the English word actually for it, but they need to needed to revive him. And um, it was a very emotional scene, especially because only a couple of weeks ago, we had a similar scene with the goalkeeper of RKC in Holland. And we've had quite a few of these incidents now. We also know that something happened to uh, Abdel Haq Nouri at Ajax, who has not come out of it well, who's uh, still uh, very, very ill and uh, can never play football again. And, I think it's just mostly the, the shock to the younger players as well who experience this for the first time. And this is why Bastos wanted to tell the players, look, I'm OK, because I know you've all had a massive shock. Yeah, that is good to hear. Always good to speak to you as well. Thank you, Marcel.